Okay, so at this point, we've got the side stitched on to the back of the hips long pouch, and we've got everything figured out for the front of the pouch alignment. So at, at this point in time, it's a good time to decide the last of the things you can do with your front portion while it's still loose. And generally, the first thing you're gonna do is figure out a couple of little details. So in the pouch, it's a good idea to just have a small curve for the opening, whether you're doing the buckle or just the post. So, the front has a pre-cut curve, but generally what I do is I incorporate the same arc sweep that you have for the hip slung part of your belt, if you're attaching with this curved piece of leather. I use that exact same radius to denote where I'm gonna cut the curve on the front of the pouch. And so that's what this is. This just repeats that same curve that we have from the hip slung pouch. So what we're gonna do is pull out our little front buckle, flip it over, and just line it up. You wanna leave a little bit of edge to both the left and the right. That just allows you to have enough leather to anchor to when you're stitching to the edging of your pouch. And then have a nice little curve that allows your hand to go in. It sort of greets your hand as you go in to reach into the pouch. If you have this square line, it tends to fold over and get in the way and snag your wrist. But if you cut just a slight arc out, you won't have that issue. So just with a black Sharpie or silver Sharpie, depending on the color of your material. If you've got a middle color like this purple, um, it doesn't really matter. You just gotta find one that you can see. And you can cut that with the rotary cutter, or you can cut it with the scissors. I'm going to cut it with the scissors today. And then once you get this curve cut out, the last thing you need to consider is how you're going to attach the sleeve for the front strap on the hip slung pouch. So that little sleeve can be stitched in, it can be riveted on, you can attach a buckle or you can use a post. You wanna consider all those things and play around with those ideas. But we've already decided at least for the purple hip slung pouch, the sleeve is going to have a post attachment. Okay, very simple design. And so when you're doing these con concave curves, you gotta go nice and slow so you get a good clean perimeter, which is why you see me doing it in real time because if you don't, you end up with sort of a rough jagged perimeter as you take the scissors to the radius. So let's go back here. So we have an excess of material and we have our stud already anchored. So we know we want that on center. And the one thing to consider when you do your hip slung pouch is you want to line up the center of the sleeve and you want to make sure that your strap has enough room to fit into the sleeve. Now you can do this once it's already stitched, but just know it's a little trickier to get the registration. You've got to hide a wood block inside your pouch so that when you're ready to do the punching step, you can still do it. So generally what I'll do is I'll do it flat because if you don't have just a free form punch or an awl to pierce the holes, you're gonna end up wanting to roll the edge of this into your rotary punch so you can squeeze and reach the areas you need. So once again, we're gonna mock it all up to test our assembly. And we're gonna make sure that our stud is on center and loose enough to where we're satisfied that we can easily get that strap in and out, okay? So once we're satisfied with all the alignments, what we need to do is make sure we have enough leather on either side and we have tons of leather. So we can fly blind and just determine where we think aesthetically we want our pieces. So rather than imagine it, it's always a good idea 
to just grab two little rivets or the rivet caps and just assess if that looks the way you intended. And once you're sure, what I do is I just press my little rivet cap down and I say, this is where I want it to be, right here. And I just press down hard, press down hard, right? And once you're satisfied with that, right, you've looked at it and you said, this is exactly where I want it. It's not too high, it's not too low. And you press down nice and firm. You then take your punch and you center it on the circle that the rivet cap has made. You want to make sure you've punched through all the leather, okay? And then the same thing on the opposite side, pressing down firmly, finding the center, and then using your punch or your awl or your rotary punch, whatever you have to go through. And then you want to check and say, did that go all the way through my both pieces of my leather? And you check on both sides, and when the answer is yes, you're good to go. So, at that point, you can mock up the whole assembly, right? You can take the post to your rivets and mock up the whole assembly to make sure that you haven't missed anything in terms of putting one component in with another component before you do all of your remaining stitching, right? You've got that rivet in place with the snap. And then our secondary rivet, put that in place. Now you could stitch these components down just as easily as you could rivet them. It's really just a question of aesthetic. Uh, the stitching is going to be a lower profile. It's not going to show as much in your design. But if you're trying to make a statement, if it's a design element, the rivets work really nicely. And then so for the back side, all we need to do is trim out the section that we're no longer using. So this, this part is all waste, and we can trim that off. And same here. We only need enough to hold that rivet in place. So we can cut as close to that rivet perimeter as we want. Or you can use multiple rivets if you want to go two and two of a smaller size. That works fine, too. But what we're going to do is take apart the entire assembly. And then trim out our radius with our scissors. So you can rivet that component in right now if you want, or you can just leave it assembled and rivet it with the block. I'm going to show how to rivet it with the block just in case people who are doing their assembly skipped a step and need to know the quick fix that's necessary. But I want you to know the proper way to lay out and then the easiest way to fix the oopses when layout doesn't go as intended. Okay. We'll put that last rivet in. Way to go. Here we go. And then we'll switch to time lapse and stitch this puppy together. Purple puppy. Okay. So we'll have a little time lapse demo of the stitch.